Is the bending with Babish cleft knife worth buying? Short answer, yes. Long answer, well, if you don't want to hear me talk about myself for a second, go ahead and skip to this part of the time code, get right into the review. What's up everyone, my name is Mike Corelli, aka Launchpad Cooks. I've been cooking professionally for about 11 years, and during that time I've developed quite a fondness for kitchen knives. I've acquired quite the collection over some time, I know quite a bit about them, and because of that I feel like I'm qualified to tell you if I think this is a good knife. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I noticed uh, before I even bought the knife, I had a little bit of apprehension uh, scrolling the page on Amazon. Uh, as you can see, I'm looking down. These are my notes. I'm not a professional. I was reading through the product page trying to get some uh, information on the knife. You know, the steel type, the bevel angle that it's sharpened to, the Rockwell hardness of the steel, things like that. And uh, I honestly, I felt I was a little apprehensive uh, going into all that because when people asked about what the steel type was, all they got was a reply of high quality German stainless steel, which doesn't tell us anything. Um, and additionally, they just never said what the hardness of the steel was. Now, they did come back after I bought the knife, I checked the page again, and they came back with what the steel type was, uh, which was listed as, uh, what is it? Yeah, 1.4116 German steel, which I had never heard of. But I did a little bit of research on it. Turns out it's halfway decent and expensive steel with a Rockwell hardness that averages, you know, between 56 and 58. Um, for reference, if you don't know about Rockwell hardness and knives, uh, the really good knives start, start around 58 to 60, 60 and higher you're getting in, you know, Japanese knives and things like that. Now, a couple other things that put me on my guard just a little bit. Um, the knives are mass produced in China. Now, while I don't necessarily have an issue with a product being made in China, I do worry about the mass production and the lack of quality control and, you know, the consistency of the knives being put out. And then the last thing, this isn't a big deal. Um, the knife is listed under Santoku knives. Uh, it's not quite a Santoku knife. It's, it's what's called a bunka, a Japanese bunka, uh, very similar to a Kiritsuke knife. Um, very close in shape to the Santoku, so that's just more of a me personal being a knife snob thing than an actual issue that we really need to look at. When we got the knife, let's talk about our first impressions. Um, I really like this box. It's a nice little pretty looking box. I almost threw this away. Uh, thank God I didn't because I would have to like Google a picture of the box or something. No, it's a nice little box. It's, you know, very simple, elegant, uh, no frills. So when we open it, Yes, I repackaged the knife to do this. Don't at me. We pull it out, and it's nestled in some nice little foam here. We pull it out, got a nice little knife. You know, something like that. And now, what I really like about it right out of the box is it's super comfortable to hold. It's very comfortable. It encourages a pinch grip, which is how you're supposed to be holding your knives. You know, you don't want to hold them like this. You want to hold them like this. You get much better blade control. And the, uh, the angle at the, uh, I don't remember what the word's called. Bolster. And so the angle at the bolster, right, where the blade meets the handle of the knife, is kind of slanted in right here. And what that does is it allows your, knife, your fingers to really just kind of nestle in there very comfortably. So the knife feels really good to hold. Additionally, it's a full tang blade, all one piece of metal with the handle wrapped around it. So very nicely made. You got Babish's little uh, silhouette, a uh, little mustache, glasses face right there, mustache, beard, mustache, whatever, facial hair. And additionally, being just comfortable to hold, it's very light. I'm actually really surprised at how light this knife is, um, which makes it very agile uh, when you're doing prep work. And another thing, with the uh, belly of the knife, the face, the, uh, the side of the blade, it's very wide, which I ended up really liking for just like scooping up ingredients as I was chopping everything. And then the last thing, I really hate when knife manufacturers advertise how sharp their knife is, because that's a non-issue. You can, you can make a piece of plastic as sharp as a razor if you know how to grind it down and sharpen it. The sharpness of the blade should not be one of your advertising points. In fact, usually when I see a manufacturer advertising how sharp their knife is, I automatically assume it's not a good knife. Um, now, they didn't advertise the sharpness of the blade with this, but it is sharp out of the box. Um, so much so that it actually surprised me and I wanted to talk about it. Um, when I got out of the box, it was paper shaving thin. Um, I wonder, do I have paper? I've got paper somewhere. It's 
still pretty sharp. Uh, now I will say after a week of heavy use, I did touch up the knife a little bit, um, but it's really back to about its box sharpness. So uh, actually be pretty careful with this knife because it is super sharp out of the box, very impressive. And in fact, I was a little disappointed that it didn't come with any sort of blade guard. However, I noticed the little piece of foam uh, it's pretty thick, and I actually uh, carved it into a little blade guard with the knife. So that should give you a bit of a bit of an idea of how how sharp it is out of the box. Now, what I decided to do to test this knife is I took it to work, and for about a week, it was the only knife I used, um, save for anything where I needed a special knife, like some intricate work, you know, like uh, deboning chicken, where I have to use like a boning knife and stuff like that. Um, this is the only knife I used. So as you'll see, as I'm talking here, uh, different things that I did. Uh, first thing here is cherry tomatoes. Um, I have a pizza at work that requires me to slice cherry tomatoes to put on them. Um, and as I was slicing them, I decided to see if I could, you know, do those paper thin uh, tomato slices. And it did, it went straight through. Um, I was able to get just super super paper thin, like tissue paper thin uh, slices of tomato, which really blew me away right off the bat. Now that was day one. And as we go into it, um, you'll see that I was just doing uh, some zucchini blanks, nothing crazy, and lots of bread. I work in an Italian restaurant. We make a ton of focaccia. We sell a ton of focaccia bread, uh, whether it's cutting into little focaccia fingers for our appetizers, whether it's cutting it into buns for sandwich bread. Um, I go through a lot of focaccia and I cut tons of loaves with this guy. And it never, it never really failed me. And mushrooms. I go through a lot of mushrooms. Like I said, Italian restaurant, we use a lot of mushrooms. I think during the week or so that I was testing this guy, I cut four to six cases of mushrooms. And it wasn't until the very end um, of constant uh, tap chopping. I'm not, I, I cut pretty aggressively when I do mushrooms. Uh, they, you know, it's about getting them done quickly. So a lot of just, you know, thousands of times. And it wasn't until the end that I really kind of started um, feeling the blade start to slow down just a touch. But for what I was putting it through, and for a $30 knife, not bad. Now, the only thing that I did notice, and you're probably not going to be able to see it here. You definitely won't be able to be, see it here, actually. Um, so I'll see if I can get a good picture of it. There was a little tiny, uh, like, little burr that developed right here on the blade. And so what will happen that you'll see is when I was slicing through the bread, the burr caught on a little on the piece of bread, like on the crust, and kind of ripped it a little bit. So that is an issue that I have with it, a slight concern. That being said, I don't think it's that big of a deal because this isn't meant for professional use and that was under a ton of use uh, and pretty aggressive use that that developed. And also it's something that I can sharpen out of the blade. So overall, uh, throughout my work week, it was, it was solid. All in all, as I was saying, I'm very impressed with the Benjamin with Babish knife. I think it's a great, arguably the best knife you can get at that price range for $30, $29.99. Um, or I think his regular chef's knife, which is going to be exactly the same, just a different shape. Uh, I think it was like 25 bucks. And at that price, man, you, you're going to have a hard time finding a better kitchen knife. This thing really, really did blow me away for what it is. So now, but who's this knife for exactly? Cause I'm not going to say, you know, if you're a chef working in the Michelin side restaurant to get your binging with Babish knife, that's not at all what I'm saying. Um, this knife is really great for beginner cooks, uh, people who don't cook a lot at home, but just need a knife. Um, that's going to be reliable for not doing too much. You know, if you're, if you're not doing too much intricate prep work, and then it's going to be a great beater knife, um, for, uh, experienced home cooks and for your professional cooks. And now what I mean with beater knife is a knife that you can do kind of some heavier, um, more, more dangerous to the knife prep work. Stuff like, you know, beating the shit out of a bunch of mushrooms or cutting through a jackfruit. Although I'd recommend a bigger knife for a jackfruit actually, but, um, or like a pineapple, things like that. Things that are gonna just like bite into your blade. They're not just gonna go straight through. It's gonna like fight back with your blade and dull it faster. So a cheap knife is always great to have in your bag. And uh, yeah, I think this actually uh, has earned a spot in my knife roll. This is, this is coming to work with me now. This has kind of become my mushroom knife, my pineapple knife. Anything that's gonna, you know, potentially damage or quickly dull one of my, one of my nicer knives, 
I'm using this guy. I can touch it up in five minutes and it's solid. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you like this type of video, the kitchen gear review, uh, leave a comment down below letting me know that you'd like to see me do more as well. Um, additionally, if you like this knife, if you plan on getting it, or if you want to get it now, or if you have gotten it, what you think, let me know down below with that too. And for those of you that have been subscribed to me for a while, don't fret. I've got a new cooking video coming very soon. Filming it tomorrow, actually, probably, hopefully. So stick around. See you guys soon.